failings of New York Hasidic education exposed by investigative report. The New York Times has released a report after a lengthy investigation into New York's Hasidic Jewish schools, also known as yeshivas. Hasidic leaders have denounced the summary findings, calling it cherry-picked data and outright lies that portray the Hasidic community as, quote, villains. Young Advocates for Fair Education, or YAFED for short, began petitioning the New York State Education Department in 2011, alleging that children attending these schools are left, quote, completely unprepared to work in, interact with the world outside of his community. In 2019, the State Department of Education released a statement that um, the 28 out, the, out of the 28 schools they visited, only two met the quote-unquote substantially equivalent status, while others are still developing. Yafed said it is typical for a yeshiva graduate to have abysmal skills in basic math, writing, and English, as Yiddish is spoken in school and at home. According to the New York Times, this quote blew my mind. Okay, I want, I want everyone to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. According to the New York Times, quote, only nine schools in the state had less than 1% of students testing at a grade level in 2019, the last year for which there was full data. All of them were Hasidic boys schools. I'm going to say that part wait, one, wait. More yeah, one more time. Yeah, one more time. Only nine schools in this state had less than 1% of the students testing at grade level in 2019. That means that 99% of the students were not testing at grade level. 99% of the students were not testing at grade level. Nine schools. All of those schools were Hasidic boys' schools. Oh, Only 1% of the students were testing at grade level in these nine Hasidic boys' schools. The Jewish community sees the Wait, can you can you speak in an American because we don't know how American school standards are like what do you mean by what are these standards like grade a stuff like what do you mean because so, we don't yeah there are standards for what students should be able to attain and show as markers of development for each grade level okay right okay and okay. so these yes. you know obviously progress as you get older and mm -hmm. you are tested, there are standardized tests that you're supposed to go through to show where you are testing along these standards. Are you tracking with your peers? Are you falling behind? Maybe you're exceeding expectations, these kinds of things. Okay. So okay. there were only nine schools in the state of New York that had less than 1% of students mm -hmm. testing at their appropriate grade level. There right, were nine right, right. schools where only 1% yes. was meeting all of the expectations. Nine. All of them were Hasidic boys schools. Okay, okay. Less so than 1%. One one so like, okay, so for example, all the schools have different percentages. Some of them are 90, some of them are 80. These nine schools um, are less than 1%. So less than 1% of them are learning the things that they're supposed to be learning. And surprise, surprise, all the nine schools that are failing this miserably, all of them are Hasidic. So there's no other school that is failing there's this miserably all the schools that are failing this miserably are hasidic jewish ones right yeah and okay. i mean there's there's other this, stuff we could get into but that was the most they went, did it, okay and do they have islamic schools as well like madrasas and everything i bet you did i bet you did doing very well actually there must be in new york yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it must be but um, let me continue um the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community sees the investigation as a religious freedom issue and fiercely resists curriculum changes. Leaving the Hasidic community is extremely difficult as former members have inadequate job skills and are usually forced to break ties with everyone and everything they've ever known. I Footsteps think that's the point. Founded in wait, 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 wait. One second, one second, one second. I think that's the point. I think it's by design. Okay, but it go is. Ahead. All right. Okay. And then I want to highlight the work of this organization. So Footsteps, founded in 2003, is the only organization in North America designed to help transition former ultra-Orthodox into society and help provide hope and vo vocational services to those who have made the brave decision to leave. Because I think when we highlight these issues, it's really important to talk about how people are trying to find solutions. And so highlighting the work of Yafed, 
who has actively been campaigning for years to get this issue appropriately addressed. And I've been following their work for a long time. And this investigation is almost like accumulation of that. And then also the work of Footsteps, who is working one on one with people to help them move forward is so important. So there's so much I want to talk about this story. Like I said, I've been following this issue for a long time. And this is was on the front page of the New York Times. This is a huge deal to finally have this out in the light like this. A few years ago, we talked on the show about how the New York Times, no, no, New York Post, the New York Post gained access to government emails in which the basically the the on various levels on the state level on the city le level of the government of the former mayor bill de blasio they were using quote unquote political horse trading with the ultra orthodox community because they are such an important voting block there were emails that were leaked that showed them explicitly saying that the the this report that they were supposed to put out about the failings of these schools would they were like oh well you will use gentle language to talk about these things so there has actually been legitimate corruption within the state in covering up this issue or basically treating it with kid gloves because of the political importance of a lot of this community and it has led to the absolute failure and ultimately impoverishment of thousands within this community. So for those who are not familiar, oftentimes girls actually test better in these schools than boys because girls receive surprisingly, maybe to some, more quote unquote secular education than the boys because the boys are basically supposed to be only studying the Talmud all day so that they will then all become religious scholars at some point. And so there were some schools where they only teach kids any secular subject for 90 minutes at the end of a day of full religious studies. So it's a rushed 90 minutes and they teach math and maybe English and maybe a little bit of history after you've been doing religious studies all day. So you're exhausted and you only get that like every other day of the week and only from the ages of eight to 12. I, I, I you know, I went to this part of New York. I have videos of me being there and um, interviewing people that I've never released anywhere. Um, but one day I will, but it's actually pretty, you know, they try to keep this community in uh, very isolated from the rest of new york right and so and it's a lot of people say and i think it might be true that not educating because somebody in the live chat asked let me see i think it was darko uh darko is asking why are they so willing to handicap their own community like this so that they stay um this might seem like a conspiracy theory but people more expert than us in this have said that this is by design. Like they want you to not have the skills to be able to be functioning outside of this community. So you not learning how to get a job or like know the things that you need to be get a job outside of this community uh, is the only thing because they have to create this wall. They don't have a real wall. I mean, this is a very, very religious community. And you know, if you are in such a community, the outside world is actually very attractive imagine like um the amish people but if the amish people were living in the middle of new york the kid you would be losing their kid i mean the amish people are already losing their kids fast right but imagine if they were living right next to all the secularism then you would be losing them even faster so they came up with this idea of like just hand, let's just handicap our kids they're literally handicapping their kids so that they can just like when they go out they get terrified like what do i do like i don't even know how to function here and you come back like see come back home or we'll take care of you that's what they do what so there are some schools that literally put bans on children speaking or reading english in their own home there yeah. are some schools that have rules against the parents using smartphones in their own yeah. home so they're not allowed to attend that school if the parents uses uses a smartphone um i 
I encourage people to go read the New York Times investigative report about this. It was very well researched and very well written. And they interview people who are current and former members, current and former people who went to these schools, worked at these schools, administrators, people in the Department of Education, all this stuff. And some of the stories of people who got out afterwards and tried to go live a normal life are so heartbreaking. One, I want to highlight the fact that Armin, your friend, Ari Herchovitz, he was highlighted in this article. So he nice. talked about his experience. So shouts out to Ari. He's a hero of mine. And if you are on, if you have Netflix, you can watch a documentary um, that highlights Ari's life and his story. It's called um, One of Us. And it talks about the issues of the ultra-Orthodox community and how severe it is for people who want to leave. So we're really going to encourage people to watch that as well, to understand this in more totality. Um, and it also talked about how, like, there are boys that leave. And there was one person they interviewed who was a third-generation American who could barely speak English at the age of 15. His family's been living in America wow. for three generations. There was another person who, when he finally decided to leave, he they, they it's impossible to get a job they can't even write down like an order on a piece of paper in english so he Ari, Ari himself Ari himself did not know what, like anything about the internet or like his when he left his community he his favorite thing in the whole world was wikipedia like he he didn't know how much stuff there is out there to know um, and he didn't know how to use the internet. And the, somebody, when eventually somebody showed him, and he, like when he learned it, he was like a teenager and he didn't know how to use the internet. Right. And he was like, when he, when he found out that he could actually, there's a thing that he could ask things from and it gives you information. He became addicted to it. It was so cute. You should go He's watch that documentary. It was just like on Wikipedia all the time. <laughs> It was so sweet. But like, oh my god, what is this thing? How, how is this possible? All the answers are here. It's amazing, guys. You should go watch that documentary. But and this is in New York, guys. This is in the middle of the biggest city in the world, the most advanced city in the whole world. You have kids growing up not knowing what the internet is, like as if they're li living in I don't know Darfur or something. Like it's crazy. Like and yeah. they, they're allowing that. How is this allowed? This should be against the and law. And they receive the taxpayer States. money. These yeah. schools oh. receive a disproportionate amount of taxpayer money. That's what the investigative report talks about as well. And, um, oh, Darko is saying, I added one of us to my list. Yes, everyone, please go watch this documentary. I cried. It's so good. Um, anyways, um, so what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. There was another story of this guy who decided to leave. He really struggled to get a job. And then at the age, this almost made me cry when I was reading this today, Armin, the story. So this guy, he like left, he went to Montreal, he tried working at a bagel factory, he couldn't afford enough, like, so he was like living on park benches. And then he had a neighbor and, who was nice enough to start teaching him how to speak English. And she gave him the first secular book he ever had. And that book was Green Eggs and Ham. And he got that book at the age of 28. No. And I don't know, that made me really emotional because, like, for those who don't know, like, Green Eggs and Ham is, like, a standard book you read to babies, like, when you're growing up in America. And I just think about, like, what that symbolizes in so many ways to hundreds of thousands of people. Like, they have to go out into the world as a baby and they have nothing and so many of them fall into drug addiction and hurting themselves because they've yeah i don't know that really got to me like when they said the, the way that they wrote it there's like he got his first secular book ever it was green eggs and ham period he was 28 period i don't know that really broke my heart Uh, just to be clear, secular, um, when they say, uh, I've been there, like they call secular books anything that is not explicitly religious. Like all of basically every normal book that is not about Judaism, they call it secular books. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like, in these schools, they, for the boys, like, they literally redact or just take Sharpies over any pictures of a girl or a woman. They yes. Just... I saw that when I was there. It was worse than Tehran. Guys, I was raised in Iran, okay? I was raised in a, in a, the, in a, under a theocratic regime, okay? In Iran, when they have, like, um, stocking, like, they're selling stockings or underwear for women, okay? In the store, they they sharpie the legs okay um and maybe the hair okay to cover it okay in new york they cover the entire girl like i was like what is this like in the books like se secular books the girls were all sharpied like not just like her skirt like she was wearing a skirt and you cover her legs or cover her hair eliminated no girls in books it was insane. Like, what is this? This is worse than Tehran. This is worse than Iran. <laughs> In the middle of New York. And this is this is not Islam. This is Jewish. Yeah. I think so. I'm really, really happy that this is finally getting more exposure. This is so crucial. And I think if you look at the thumbnail we have in this video, there was there's been huge protests about finally. There has been major motions that have been passed within New York City to mandate more oversight over these schools. And in response, there's been lots of protests by the community. And if you see in this thumbnail, there are people protesting who said, we will sit in jail rather than change our children's education. No. Like, I just have nothing. I don't know. I really just, I don't even know how to respond to something like that. It's so self-explanatory in a way. And I think one of the things that's really difficult is that <sighs> in response to these things, the community comes forward and basically waves the flag of anti-Semitism which I think is also such a huge disservice, not only to the community itself, but to their children, but obviously they don't see it that way. And when the New York Times sent out a summary statement to all of these sources, all of these schools basically saying, this is what we're gonna publish. If you have any final comment, this is your opportunity to say something. And then they all started raising the red flag, raising the high alert about the, the, this you know, defamatory issue that's gonna come out in the New York Times. They basically started saying that, and this is true, there has been a huge rise in anti-Semitic violence across America, but also particularly in New York against the ultra-Orthodox community. Like, I can't deny this. It's true, and it's actually quite severe. And so, Armin, I'd like, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this. They're basically saying releasing this kind of information now is extremely irresponsible given the sharp rise in anti-Semitic violence that we're seeing in oh New York God. itself. You, I, you know what? You know what's anti-Semitic? Treating ch Jewish children like this, handicapping—that's anti-Semitic. You're this is anti-Jewish. Allowing what the doing. state allowing this to continue would be anti-Semitic. This is actually pro-Semitic. You're saving the Jewish children. You can't be more pro-Semitic than this. You're helping them from abuse. You're saving them from abusive parents. This is pro-Jewish. This is not anti-Jewish. This is pro-Jewish. A lot of these, a lot of these schools actually do. There's been major accusations of severe corporal punishment in this in these schools, and like I don't even know if I want to repeat some of the things that were reported by the New York Times. And what I learned in the New York Times is that corporal punishment is still allowed in private schools in New York State. That itself blew my mind. What the f? We're, we're allowing the abuse of children. We're sanctioned. The law sanctions the abuse of children in the private school setting just because it's a private school. What the hell is going on here? So that itself was like a bombshell to me. I'm like, this needs to be addressed. But, oh, wait, what do you have here? Okay, so because people think I might be exaggerating, so I wanted to show some evidence, okay? This is mm. the, uh, wait, where is it? this is the New York Post, is it? The New York Times, sorry. I always get those confused. Okay, look, this is this is not the this is not the level of censorship I'm used to in Iran. Okay, and this is in 
So pages from a censored textbook used in a Hasidic yeshiva in Brooklyn, okay, shows that boys cannot see images of girls or read the names of many non-Jewish holidays, okay? In Iran, we had, uh, you know, cartoons that were from other countries, like if there was cartoons that made by um, Iran, in Iran, they had, the girls had hijab and everything. But we would, we still saw cartoons from other countries with girls like showing their hair and stuff. That was not censored. Anyways, look at this. Um, today, so the, the left one is the non-censored word and the right one is non uh, the censored word. Like today we celebrate Chinese New Year, okay? So on the Jewish side for the Jewish schools, like look at this. This girl is like, why is this girl censored? Like the entirety of the girl. And that one, that's a girl, like an old lady. They're not even doing something that is like, she's holding food. Aren't, don't you, like, she's doing something traditionally, like, womanly, I mean, according to tradition. She's in the like, kitchen, to, okay. To, I, she's serving food. Why is she censored? Okay, and here, okay, this one I get. Look, the girl. <laughs> this one I get. Flat tire. <laughs> okay, so the girl changed the flat tire. The girl is censored, and the word girl is also censored. That's because crazy. girls don't yeah like the girl <laughs> the erasure are... of women is so severe that you cannot be exposed to the word that describes a female no but no because she's changing a flat tire girls are not supposed to change tires I don't, like this I, 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 it's so crazy guys this is in new york okay this is i'm not talking pakistan i'm not talking saudi arabia this is taxpayer funded in the united states okay okay the word halloween is censored here Christmas is censored. Oh, look, like, the war on Christmas is not happening by us atheists. It's happening by the Jews. The war, like they, think, like they, they accuse us. We celebrate. Atheists celebrate Christmas. There's your, here's your war on Christmas. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, what is this? Look at this. There's a, people are enjoying a swimming pool. The whole swimming, the whole, the entirety of people in a swimming pool is censored. Well, because it's sex mixing. And there's a, a girl set in a ring, and the word girl is censored. The girl, the word girl is censored. This is, <laughs> and this is allowed. This is not only just allowed, this is taxpayer funded in the United States. Go figure. Yeah, it's there's so there's so much about more about this story that I want to get into, but I mean it, it goes so deep. It goes so deep, but we can't get into all of it. So I would again encourage people to go read the full New York Times story. But Armin, could you please bring up the two things that I put in the show notes to display? Yes. Okay, so the first one is from Footsteps Organization. Once again, I want to plug and celebrate the work of Footsteps Organization because they are, again, the only organization in the United States specifically meant to help transition people who leave these ultra-Orthodox, high-control communities and help them, um, you know, enter normal life. And so, um, Armin, I will need you to toggle through this slideshow, but it says, as a Footsteps member, what is one thing that you would like to tell people reading the New York Times article about Hasidic schools? And so I thought it'd be really important to share what people who left these communities have to say about this report. So one quote is, just because you didn't experience it personally doesn't mean it isn't happening. Listen to people's stories. It is often very unsafe for people within the community to speak up. Fighting for my children's education almost resulted in me losing custody of them. Just because you turned out fine doesn't make this okay. Don't use this article as an excuse to hate Jewish people. Use it to uplift us and help us. The fact that we know some people who got degrees and can list them shows the rarity. Because a lot of people say, oh, well, look, this person went to yeshiva. He turned out fine. He's He has a degree, blah, blah, blah. They're like, well, you can only point to some. <laughs> that shows how hard it is. By the way, the ones that have managed to get out of this, you have to like really, <laughs> there must have been geniuses. Like they are really special. Oh, seriously. Um. The article wasn't to harass, simply to point out the importance of education. 
This is not anti-Semitism. My child's life was destroyed by a judge looking away at his lack of education. And then they say, you know, if you want more information about how to get involved or how to get help, go check out the Footsteps website. And the second thing that I wanted to show is, here we go, um, is the Yafed organization. So Yafed is the primary organization who has been fighting to get this issue addressed for over 10 years. And I love their work. It was founded by a former yeshiva student. They help give scholarships to people who want to pursue a genuine secular education or to help fill the gaps of their own education. They help lobby the government. They help go to government agencies and make sure that this is being addressed, that they're being paid attention to. And they said, committed to improving secular education, oops, in Haredi and Hasidic schools, because every child has the right to learn. And I think this is how this needs to be framed. This is about making sure that the services that are available to other students in the United States are available to these children in ultra-Orthodox communities as well, because they are American citizens. They have the same rights as other American children, and they should, you know, have the state needs to step in and protect their interest, basically, in many of these situations. Um, this so, yeah, is also please go check out and support their work. This is also a reminder to ignore any religious parents that says, it's my children, I could do whatever I want. Uh, mm. You don't own your children, okay? Uh, we have stopped selling uh, and buying human beings. Humans don't own other humans, okay? We have trusted you with taking care of our humans that uh, come out of your body or come out of the body of people you had sex with, okay? If you prove us otherwise, the government has to step in and take that uh, and reevaluate that trust, okay? So parents don't get to choose what happens to their children because they don't own the children. The government has to make sure that they're being taken care of, including uh, making sure that they have all the skills they require to become independent and take care of themselves. Um, mm -hmm. We have t 10 star comments. Do you wanna read them? Oh. Oh my goodness. I don't know if we have time to go through all these. Let's see. Um, we addressed this. We addressed this. <laughs> Forever Stormy is saying about the how there's only less than 1% in those nine schools. There are like dozens of schools that were looked at, but this was just nine that, you know, met that abysmal standard. Um, she said those 1% are, are kids are probably Einstein's that should be shipped off to MIT. <laughs> um <laughs> Forever Storm is saying most madrasas are not evaluated as part of this report. Do you mean the report by the New York Times or the data received by the Department of Education itself? Because that should have included all schools. But I do know that they, um, the author said that a lot of this information is not just already compiled. Like they had to go out of their way to go ask for this information and basically compile this data themselves. So. The, uh, the Islamic uh, Muslims in the United States don't have the strategy of handicapping your children to stay in the community. Okay, in fact, they seem to be having the opposite approach of <laughs> trying to get <laughs> trying to get people as high as positions as possible. <laughs> so maybe like maybe more of them become congressmen and women, like or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. like, so I mean, actually. To be fair, Jewish people, Jewish people also, right? So this is only this is not the the, the entirety of the Jewish community. This is a very fringe uh, group within the Jewish community in the United States, right? So, so yeah, maybe. So actually, I take that back because maybe there's problematic madrasas as well in the United States. Just because many of them don't have this approach doesn't mean that there are not some hmm. that might have. But it. these tactics that are used are. I want to be clear. I think that these ultra-Orthodox communities are cults, straight-up destructive cults. Yes. They are. It's yes. the, the level of control that they exert upon their members and community is extreme, so extreme. It's it's worse than the Jehovah's Witnesses, who most people identify as a destructive, full-blown cult. Um, and I think there needs to be more appropriate labeling of that. That doesn't mean yeah, that but we're people. That just means we are saying the methods that you use to control your community are destructive to human pr prosperity and creativity. 
Yeah, also, also, most Jewish people are not ultra-Orthodox. Oh, in fact, by a long I, shot. Yeah, so how could this be anti-Semitic? Aren't Jewish people actually, on average, more educated than the average Americans? Like, I, I would guess... Like, I don't know. Are. I feel like, if you... if you Based on the last data of, I saw, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you if you like ignore ultra orthodox and just look at the Jewish community as a whole, then I think like they don't they have they don't have this problem at all. In fact, they are like more educated. Um, yeah. So how could this be anti-Semitic? Like nobody's talking about the Jewish Americans. People are talking about the problems in ultra orthodox communities. Like I don't because understand they, that as a, a, a religious and sacred mandate to preserve a way of life that was nearly eradicated in the twentieth century. They literally talk about replacing the six million. Oh, wait, what? Mm -hmm. Who? Who says? Who? who the, 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 the ultra orthodox community when it? I know within multiple within some ultra orthodox communities, oh. that is the mentality. We have okay. a duty to, to preserve this way of life because it was nearly eradicated. And we also have a duty to replace the six million that were lost. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I never so a lot of it's it's a, a trauma that informs a lot of this. Honestly, mm -hmm. I have something to say. I don't know if it's YouTube friendly. Oh Jesus! Okay, let's not say it then. <laughs> okay. I'm so. It, it's not I'm bad. Sure I'm just by you. I don't know what to expect anymore. <laughs> okay, I'll. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, finish the comments. Oh, and Yuval's bringing up a good point that I kind of left hanging when I was talking about why girls are actually better educated. He's saying, Susanna, girls are given given more general education because they are ideally supposed to provide for the scholarship of the husbands. Because the husbands are basically supposed to spend all of their time studying the Talmud, becoming more religious and scholarly. And the women have to keep the home and work. So in many other ultra traditional religions women are kept at home they're not allowed to work but it's the reverse in this case that surprises most people the women work the most okay i figured out a way to say it that is like that people are not going to take it the wrong way okay so i was worried if i say it like without thinking i would say it in a way people think like i'm saying something that i'm not but i think mm -hmm. I, I got it okay cool um, um religious a lot of religious people, not all, uh, use tragic events as a way to build a sect or a movement of their specific religious um, on top of it. Okay. Again, I'm not saying the tragedy is not was not tragic. Okay. Uh, just because I'm saying that somebody a religious mm -hmm. sect is using that as a way to promote. Like, for example, okay, uh, Falun Dafa, right? Uh, Falun Dafa or MEK, different cults, mm -hmm. okay? These were, Falun Dafa is genuinely um, prosecuted, like, um, and attacked and violently hunted down by the CCP, by the Chinese government, okay? And it's a human rights violation, and nobody should deny otherwise because the evidence is there, okay? However, Falun Dafa is also a dangerous cult, okay? And it's using the victimhood of its members as a way to promote its cult. You saying that Falun Dafa is using this viol uh, human rights violation doesn't mean that it's not a human rights violation, okay? So, it's, again, the MEK is also a very dangerous cult. The Iranian government has killed thousands of MEK members in a, and that's a, one of the a human rights violation that we actually bring, try to bring attention to as a, as a mass massacre that has been forgotten in history, but we're still against the MEK. Uh, we, we understand that they're the victims of the Iranian government. We don't want to take anything away from that. Um, but we saying that the MEK is a dangerous cult is not denying that uh, tragedy. Okay, so in a similar way, I would just I had to use these two other examples so nobody takes me out of context. Okay, I'm just saying that the fact that the things happened in World War II and the six million Jews were taken out like in gas chambers and stuff like that. If I say that these people are using that narrative as a way to promote their cult, 
I'm saying that without trying to take away anything from how significant and how like important that tragedy was. Okay, that is absolutely very safe. See, I think I'm doing a good job at saying you things. You did an that. excellent job. You did an excellent okay. job. See, okay. I love it when you take just a moment to th really think about what you're going to say. It lurks out <laughs> so good because I know you can do it. <laughs> okay. I'm getting better at this. I'm getting better at this. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh, you highlighted this. Okay. Oh, no, I didn't mean to. Oh, so bread of yeah. life. Did you want to respond to this? Bread of life is saying, Rebecca, the we sounds a bit creepy. Does the government? Own Armin, the government? The, not Rebecca. Armin. Armin said Rebecca. Oh, okay. So Rebecca is saying, Armin, the we sounds a bit creepy. Does the government own the children? Which government? Some governments are not tr trustworthy either. Yes. Um, nobody owns the children. Okay. Uh, but the government ro government's role is to protect its citizens. Okay. Um, the most important citizens that it needs to defend are the ones that cannot speak for themselves or protect themselves, right? And are not in a position to advocate for themselves, right? So the government understands that the the most most likely um, people that are going to be the people that are most likely are able to take care of this child are the parents. Okay, so that's why we trust the parents. We don't give the parents the children to take care of the children just because they own them. We understand that these are the most likely the the people that are the most likely to take care of the children and you know give them all the things that they need, the love, the care, right? Uh, that the government is responsibility is to make sure that all children get the the care that they need, including the skills that they need to eventually take care of themselves, right? That's why they give them based on a social, we have a social contract that the guardians of the children are their biological parents, unless otherwise like they're adopted or there's a certain situation. That trust is not supposed to be guaranteed. A good government can reevaluate that trust if the biological parents indicate in any way that they should not be trusted with the care of the child. And the government, as a, as a, the body that is supposed to take care of its citizens, especially the children, would have to step in and check if that trust should be granted to them or not, right? So if you say which government, some governments are not trustworthy either, yeah, well, then we have a problem, okay? So now we have a bigger problem, okay? So now you can't trust the parent and you can't trust the government to take care of the citizens, including children. That's a position where you're screwed. I don't know what to do, okay? But in situations where the government could be somewhat trusted, then we expect this government to look at children who are not being taken care of very well. For example, parents who are not vaccinating their children, uh, parents who are refusing blood transfusion to their children, uh, or parents who are not giving them uh, their children the proper education that they require to be functioning members of society. These, if you if you fail as a parent, you can't come in and say it's my kid. I could do whatever I want. No, screw mm -hmm. you. The government comes in and protects the child. Yeah, especially because these are American citizens. Their rights are guaranteed under their constitution, whether or not the parents, you know, understand what should be available to them. Um, so I just want to highlight Ion saying, <laughs> yes, Armin, you did a good job. Oxymoron's <laughs> like, good job. And Ion is saying, Ali Dabo Vice, we're proud of that. <laughs> And no, this one, you're getting the credit for this. For our story. <laughs> Professor Macy Santa's good company is rubbing off on our men. I don't know if it's my good company or me just um, maybe coming down on him too hard every now and then. <laughs> I, I feel bad sometimes. Yeah, actually, you're right. I don't know if I'm more motivated by not getting a backlash from the community or I'm actually motivated by not traumatizing you. <laughs> I think I'm more motivated by not traumatizing Suzanne. <laughs> but you like to traumatize me. What are you talking about? On purpose. Ah. I like to I like to traumatize you when I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> oh guys, you have no idea how bad it gets for me off screen. The stuff Ormond says to me literally I think might be illegal. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, 
Uh, Rebecca is saying, I like the response that the government has the responsibility to protect the citizens, especially the ones who cannot speak for themselves. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, um, okay, yeah. so, oh, the doorknob head is saying, Susanna is glowing with pride for Armin. I guess she hasn't seen the Armin secular rarity show yet from yesterday. Oh, don't, oh. did I type that out loud? Okay, yes, I did see the show. I thought it was excellent, but Armin did say something that made me just scream out loud. God damn it, Armin. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys, go you watch knew that. what you said. When you said it, I was like, I was... what is wrong with this man? <laughs> like, literally right. what is wrong with him <laughs> yeah guys go watch the um ask atheist anything episode with uh atheist. if you if you want to find uh, that specifically what i'm referring to i left a comment that tags yeah. that timestamp. <laughs> yeah, yeah go look in the comments and look for no one <laughs> yeah can f our organization <laughs> as hard as our <laughs> no, kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kidding. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> hey, Our hey. founder shooting us in the foot every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I made secular, secular rarity. He he. At first, he was shocked, but then he played along. So it can't be that bad yeah, yeah, if, yeah, he, yeah. if he if he if he got a lot. Yeah. Now I'm throwing him under the bus. It's okay. All right. Exactly. <laughs> Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.